Believe it or not, I'm walking on air On my rhino monstrosity Flying around on a wing in a prayer Who could it be? Believe it or not, it's just me In this video, I make two miniatures from some random toys. So last time... Ooh. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm looking for, I'm, I am looking for stuff to make a chimera. Chimera. And, uh, I do have an awful lot of stuff. Now, obviously, I could make a, I could use this particular guy here to make the classic style uh, Chimera. I don't think I'm gonna do that. I kinda wanna make a really bizarre one. I mean, these are all things that I just found at the Goodwill at By the Pound. So, let's see here. Oh, this one, see, stuff like this. This one actually kinda looks too nice of a sculpt to cut up, but you know, I, I, I can't be precious about everything. So, yeah, there it is. So I was looking at this guy right here and I thought this would make a really nice D&D uh, &D miniature. It, it does have some weird injection point stuff, but the, you know, it does have a, a nice enough little bit of detail and stuff. Uh, so I definitely want to use this guy as a very bizarre chimera. Um, oh, hey, check it out. Oh, I forget the, the Dragon Riders series, I think this was. I think this is uh, the, the Dragon Riders series. I found this guy here. This is actually kind of cool, old school uh, toy. So I don't think I'm going to be using this for the Chimera, but that is that is really neat. So I didn't even realize it, but I actually have uh, another Rhino, which is very similar, but this is definitely a different sculpt. So this Rhino here would be great for a regular Rhino, so I don't feel bad about using this guy for my Chimera now, because I have this guy I can put in my box of animal miniatures. I'm thinking... For whatever reason, I think the the gazelle slash antelope here. I think that would look like really bizarre if it was like, the, yeah, that would be kind of interesting. A camel, cow, a goat, a goat, an aardvark. I'm sorry, an anteater, not an aardvark. This random stuff that I bought, this is when I was looking for bases. So I bought these because I thought these would make good bases. Ooh, that's a very nice. Oh, the koala. The dread dire koala. Uh, no, I don't I don't think I'm gonna do wings on this. I'm thinking I go like really weird and have like the rhinoceros, right? And then I have the antelope head on one side. And then I have just a frog head on one side. That would be kind of weird. But it's a little bit too small, sadly, so I can't use a llama in this one. Seal, but I mean, this is a pretty nice seal. And it's very tough, so that would be incredibly difficult. You can't tell, but the plastic on this thing is, like, ridiculously. So that would be... I don't... I don't have that many heavy tools, so... That's a weird, uh... Let's see here. So this doesn't have a one. This is a dice that doesn't have a one. Rather, it's got a question mark. So I'm not sure what... Obviously, it's from a board game. But, uh, I'm gonna put that aside with my special dice. Enamel paint, for some reason. Probably shouldn't keep that around. Who's that Pokémon? I don't know. I'm too old. I'm too old. I'm too old for Pokemon. So these wings would actually fit this line pretty good. So we could kind of do a traditional Chimera. Because I have this goat mini here, which is not... I won't feel bad about decapitating this guy. Instead of a, a, a dragon, we have a dinosaur head. I just noticed this guy here is kind of like a pseudo-swamp. I thought he was like a, a creature from the Black Lagoon guy, right? But then I noticed he's got the little wings on the back. So this is like a little Cthulhu guy. So, he's really, really rubbery though, so I don't know. 
Uh, I might keep that in the back of my mind for a future project. This goat's slightly better, and it's got slightly better detail in the face. And it's a little bit too big to be a proper, you know, unless it was a dire goat. Dinosaur parts, pretty much. Oh, yeah. See, these are, like, dragons, but they're more like action figures. So, they have... They're really bad quality, too. They're very... Well, I mean, they're not, like, bad, bad quality, but they're very rubbery. Yeah, they're, they're clearly just made so you can mix and match. So, oh, yeah. This is, this is pay dirt, my friend. This is pay dirt. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of, like, wings and random stuff in here. This is some pay dirt. Okay. And these, these are, like, I don't know what these are, but the quality is very rubbery. So I don't feel so bad about uh, using these. Ooh, look at this tail, though. It's a really good sculpt. It's, I mean, obviously these are toys, so it's not. But, I mean, the, the sculpt is very nice, but the material is very rubbery. But obviously that could be used for something. Oh, let's see here. Is there any other heads? I mean, the wings. It, it would be kind of funny. It would actually kind of be funny to see a winged. <laughs> I'm coming around to the wings. The frog face would look really cool, but and the frog had a little bit, it's just a little bit too big to have on there. So I'm going to have that be that one. I think a Chimera Manticore would be cool. So we'll, we'll just leave this one. I'm going to have the dinosaur head on this one and the goat head on this one. So, all right. So this one, this one is going to be the more, sort of more traditional one. So we have all our victims picked out for our monstrosities. Two sets of wings, one large creature for the base, and two smaller creatures each for the heads. I already chopped off the dragon head, and now I have to get rid of the little uh, plastic ball here. And later on, I'm going to have to deal with the uh, getting a neck portion to put on this thing, and that was a real pain. But uh, let's move on. The gazelle! The gazelle. Uh, pretty tough plastic. It's obviously very dangerous to do this sort of stuff with these tools. So uh, I only recommend doing this if you're used to messing around with stuff like this and always be careful. So what I'm going to do is put them in place with some super glue and then afterwards use tacky glue and let that dry fully over a period of at least four hours. And here's that neck I was talking about. This plastic is like adamantium or something. It's crazy. So it was really difficult getting this neck portion out. If I was going to do this again, I would have just sculpted a neck. Why not? Why Why was I so crazy about needing this neck thing? Anyways, the dinosaur was super simple. Caught off a portion of its neck here so I could get a nice, uh, nice little adhesion there with the super glue. And here I am trying to figure out the wings. Uh, the wings fit pretty easily on the uh, other one, but this one I had to cut the wings and uh, have them fitted with super glue along the sides there. So, but I think that worked out pretty nice. So we have both of them all figured out and I'm just gonna let this glue dry completely. Uh, I think I let it dry more than four hours before I started to do the green stuff blending. Green stuff is a two part modeling putty, which uh, is very sticky and soft when you uh, originally combined it, and it slowly hardens. So it's perfect uh, to be worked into amazing textures. And you can use pretty much any tool to do this, as long as the tool has been dipped in water and is wet. And this does have the added benefit of being hard as a rock when it's fully cured. And that's gonna take a uh, full 24 hours to do so. You know, basically, my methods are very uh, amateurish. If you're interested in uh, green stuff, uh, you can basically search on Google and find uh, a lot of people that are much better at this than I am. But I must say, I think I did a decent job just using the little kind of poking method to just blend all the parts together. And here is something very exciting. Uh, I actually did some more green stuff sculpting to make tails. Yes, the classic snake tails.
that you see on the old school chimeras. That's what I made on these. Some very goofy looking uh, snakes. But you know what? Uh, I think they work out pretty well considering everything. And uh, once that's fully cured, I painted them up with some Vallejo uh, Mecha Primer. Uh, and uh, you know what? They already looked pretty good once everything was the same color. And if you want to see the painting stream, then I will link that below. I put them on some large bases, and as you can see, the painting process went very well. And I think these look pretty dang amazing. Now, obviously, I think uh, you're, you're going to get... <laughs> Look how goofy that snake is. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I need to work on my sculpting a little bit more, but uh, these are some very nice-looking D&D miniatures. I mean, frankly, considering where they came from, uh, I'm actually pretty proud of this dumb little project. Uh, the Rhino Chimera is definitely going to make an appearance in my upcoming campaign. And here you can see the green stuff sculpting that I did with the paint job there. You can see I actually did a pretty decent job blending in the parts into a cohesive whole of a monster. And we'll get some 360 footage of these lovely little uh, crafted uh, creatures. I think definitely for the Rhino one, I'll have to make some custom uh, creature settings for that. I don't think the uh, standard Chimera will be uh, sufficient for such a strange monster, but I am very happy with how the traditional creature got together. It looks pretty cool. The winner is the Rhino. I thought the Dragon Head was going to be too big, but when you look at it from above, you don't really notice as much. And frankly, that's what you need to kind of remember with miniatures like this. You're going to be looking at them from above, from about three feet away. So, you know, you can't really judge them harshly if they're not the greatest if you're looking at them super close up. So I think these are definitely table ready. Well, thank you so much for uh, taking a gander at this dumb little project. It was <laughs> it was very fun. I really hope you enjoyed watching the video. As always, if you like this channel, make sure that you are subscribed and hit that stupid little bell thing in the notifications because apparently that counts nowadays. Uh, and if you want to support this channel, remember to share your favorite video on your social media. And as always, there are links in the description on how you can support this channel so you can see more videos like this. You all have a good one. Have a great day, and as always, thank you for watching the video.